So once we define the application, once we onboard the application in stage point, we will be doing the aggregation. Once we do the aggregation, all the data from the target system will be pulled into stage point. Okay. Suppose that you will not be able to see all the data in the identity warehouse, in the identity queue. Okay. So only the display name will be visible. Rest all the values will be remain empty. Okay. Why? Because sale point has some defined attributes and you are passing some set of attributes. For example, uh, I'm passing like uh, email. Okay. Email is a uh, attribute present in sale point. In your target system, it is there like email address or email ID. Okay. So how sale point will understand the email needs to store the email address of the target system. Email is one attribute, email address is another attribute. So how sale point will be understanding to store that same data into the same attribute, identity attribute. So for that purpose only, we have to configure this mapping, identity mapping. So how it goes like is, you can see here, these are all the default attributes, whichever are marked in red over here. The well, below the line, whatever that you see are the extended attributes. So once you have done with the aggregation, you will be seeing only this username, but not the remaining attributes. So remaining attributes, we need to map them manually for the authoritative application. So you can see here the identity mappings, the employee ID with employee ID, first name with first name, last name with last name email address with email id so whatever the values that you wanted to map like you need to tell sale point which attribute value needs to store under which attribute value like that you need to tell this to sale point so this is the uh, configuration ui so you can see when you go to the identity mapping this kind of a screen will be visible to you so you can just open that particular uh, attribute name You can give these details and in the bottom you have the source mapping right under the source mapping you will be mapping the attributes so currently i have two applications currently i have two authoritative applications that i am gonna onboard so in those two authoritative applications we have region attribute and that region attribute we are gonna map with a sale point region attribute and these are like searchable, multi-valued and group factory columns are there, right? Searchable means this particular attribute will act like one of the filter condition. If you want to search for any data in same point, we need some filters, right? So this would be coming like one of the filter condition. Multi-valued, if this particular attribute has multiple values, yesterday I explained you, right? The multi-value thing, the same way here also, you can enable that checkbox. Now group factory. So what is meant by group factory and the region why I have selected the group factory. So group factory means like uh, if the group of identities are residing in one particular attribute, for example, region is such kind of an attribute where the group of identities will be located in one particular region, right? So first name, last name, we cannot call it as a group factory. Why? Because number of IDs will not be stored under first name, right? Whereas number of people will be stored under one department, one region. Manager ID also you can call it as a group factory because number of employees will be reporting under one manager like that. So searchable, used for correlation analysis, uh, analytics and reporting, etc. Multi-valued user may belong to one or more constant of group factory, support dynamically generated groupings of identities based on the attribute. Example. All users in this uh, region become a group used to filter groups, include the actions, refresh only identities from a particular region. Okay, let's continue. So next is the aggregation and refresh task. So just a two points to explain you. Aggregation task helps you to pull the data from the target system to sale point. So when you run the aggregation task, it means you're pulling some data from the target system into sale point. Next, the refresh task. So the purpose of refresh task is any kind of modifications that you are making to an identity and that needs to be updated into the sale point database, then you would be running a refresh task, okay? That is the purpose of these two tasks.
So purpose, read the data from application to account attributes. For the identity refresh purposes, update the identity attributes from the application account attributes through calculation and through calculation feedback. So this is the identity cube creation process. So whatever that we have uh, explained till now, you can see in these six points. So starting with authoritative resource contains accounts, application or connector defines schema and how to connect it to the resource. Aggregation task runs, connector reads the accounts, identity IQ creates authoritative identity cubes, and finally identity mappings define the creation of identity attributes. Identity attributes, you know, right? First name, last name, email. So these are all termed as identity attributes. Next. Manage, ident managing identity user access. So this includes the capabilities. So when you just click on this user, right, you will be seeing some number of capabilities over here. Whatever the capability that you wanted to assign, you can just assign it. So based upon the capability, the users will be seeing some kind of a tabs. As a system administrator, you will be able to see all the options. We technically call them as quick links. Okay, so all the quick links, the administrator can view it. But if you don't have any capability, only home and my work, these two things only you can see. So these are all the capabilities, list of capabilities that you have for selection. See, uh, for a normal user, only home and my work, these two things only will be visible. That's a default page for every user. Next scoping, so scoping is something like uh, restricting the access. So for example, I belong to a development team and the finance team is there. So I should not be able to view the entitlements for requesting of financial team. Okay, so finance applications entitlements, I should not see, neither I should not see, nor I can raise a request for as well. So that is kind of a restriction. So you can see Bill is authorized to application one and application two, John is authorized to application three. Whereas Bob is authorized to all the three applications. So here Bill cannot access application three data. John cannot access application one and two data. So that is the intention of scoping. Next work groups. So these are all like kind of a small, small topics only one time configurations kind of will be doing it. So work groups is something you will be putting some group of identities acting like a owners. Okay. So just like uh, when you are creating any application or creating any object in same point, you need to put an owner for it. Okay. So generally there will be only one drop down to select the owner from the list of identities. Okay. So rather selecting a one single user, your client may approach you saying you have multiple owners for that one object or for that one application, there are five different owners. So in such a case, though you have only one drop down over there, how do you add five identities over there? You cannot add it, right? There comes a concept called work group. Okay. So work group also treated like an identity only. So in that identity, you will be adding some group of identities. For example, five, six identities, if you want to add it, you can just add it. And that work group will be acting like a one unique identity that you will be selecting from the drop down. The application owner drop down, you can select this work group, and all those five, six people, whatever that you have added, right? Those people will become the owner for that application. So that is the intention of creating the work groups in same part. A lot of scenarios or a lot of situations in your real time, you may be creating this work groups only. So you will be going to set up groups and work groups tab. You will be able to create the work groups over here. And this is a UI screen for work groups. I'll be explaining you again how that UI looks like and how to create a work group practically. And these are all some things like uh, manually, if you do it, it will be error prone, slow and tedious. Automatically by using some rules also, you can implement by writing a creation rule, customization rule, you can implement these functionalities. So now to create the applications, you are supposed to go to applications and application definition. So as of now, if you want to check the identities, you can just go to identities and identity warehouse. You will be seeing only one identity that is administrator identity with which we have logged. So now I'm just uh, creating an applications. So we have uh, as per the project, we have two authoritative applications to be configured. One contains employee data, the other contains the contractor data. Okay, since both are the working uh, employees or physical identity only, right? 
So those are stored in the HR database. So we are referring to the HR database to pull the data into So you can see a warning message since there are no applications configured now. You can see a warning here like no authoritative applications defined in the system and all identities will be marked uncorrelated. Okay. So mandatorily you should have the authoritative applications because you without the physical data, whatever the entitlements or uncorrelated uh, uh, sorry, non-authoritative applications that you configure also, there is of no use. Okay. So let's start with configuring the authoritative applications. Click on add new application. Give a name. So before giving a name, I'll just show you my target system data. So open this SP admins home implementer training data. And you can see here auth employees.csv, auth contractors.csv. So these are the two files that contains our employee data. So you can see this particular data. See, these are our users, HR data, which is being stored. Okay. You can see employee ID, first name, last name, manager ID, full name, email, department, region. So these are all the identity attributes, we call it as, okay? And this many identities that we are going to now onboard it to Salesforce. So this file will be considered as the target resource. And the application that we are creating is a Salesforce application. So now we are onboarding the target system data into Salesforce by creating an application. So give a name. So first application name, I'm just giving like HR employee. Owner at ten, I'm giving. Sorry, Walker. I'm giving the owner as admin. Select one. You can just select the delimited file connector. Once you select the connector only, the page gets loaded and the configuration details will be coming in. See, the page got loaded and the remaining uh, fields have been populated. Now select this application as the authoritative application. Because this is an authoritative application and this marking this. Now go to configuration. So here in the configuration, first is a settings part. So you need to give the whatever the required settings for this delimited file connector. You are supposed to configure them. So for the delimited file connector, it will be expecting the file path where exactly that physical file is being there. That location you need to put it over here. So let me take that. properties, take this location, paste it here along with the file name. Yeah. Delimiter is a comma. File has column head in the first line. Done. So why, why I'm putting this delimiter comma is this is a CSV file. It's separated by a comma separated values. Next file has column header in the first line. If you don't select this checkbox, what would happen is sale point will be considering this employee ID also one identity. Okay. If you want to skip that first line, we will be explaining sale point that file contains first line as a header. Next, you have some options like filtering, merging and iteration partition, right? So filtering, what does filtering means? So filtering means if you want to filter some data from the given uh, sheet, okay? For example, number of lines to skip if I want to put three, okay? So in your data, if sometimes when you are pulling this data from the database, you will be seeing some variables like sys, sysadmin, some kind of information that will be passed along with this data. So if you want to skip those three lines, you can put the filter conditioners. It will not consider the first line, remember. Why? Because we already explained sale point that first line is the header. Okay. Hence, it skips the first line and it will start from the second, third, and fourth, like that. Next, what we have filter empty, we will be selecting this checkbox. Okay. So, filter empty means like it will be already selected. Why? Because any kind of a spaces between these lines. So, that should be ignored. That is the intention. Next comment character. So comment character means like if you wanted to, uh, for example, if you have this data, the same kind of an uh, value values are there in between. 
in between your records this kind of a junk data is being done then in this case you are supposed to request your client to add a special character like for example hash array like this you can request your client to whichever the lines are because they may remove it or if they need some for commenting purposes if they may need it also in that case you can request them to put it a special character before the lines which are required okay now what we can do while we are pulling the data we can just remove this number of lines skip also and you can add this hash map what would happen wherever whichever records contains or starts with the hash symbol those records will be eliminated will not be pulled lastly filter string so filter string is kind of a filter condition where you can filter out based upon some condition like uh, region for example region equal to americas so region equals to americas so what would happen people whoever are part of region americas those identities will be excluded those identities won't be pulled into same point same way for location equal to austin so those people who are residing in austin those those identities will not be pulled into same point so that is how the configurations of filtering goes like because a lot of cases we are supposed to filter the data if the data is not given to you properly but remember one thing if it's if it's a small or single minor mistake also as a developer we should not do any kind of a changes any change that should come from the app owner only if any changes are needed you should revert back to the app owner saying these are the changes that are to be made okay but we should not make any special changes so that's all so in my file there are no filters i'm just removing everything So yeah. quick question: What happens if you don't put any filters? Nothing will happen. I have. I have I'm not putting any filters right now. Oh, okay. Every data so, will be filled. So, so the filters like they come as requirements or? Sorry, filters. The filters when you when you put filters like when you choose to put filters they come is per requirements right? Yeah, it's on the requirement only. I as I just given you some scenarios like. Right? Okay. If you see certain scenarios, then you would be using filters. If they, in my current data, ev everything is looking absolutely fine. There is no filters needed. But in certain situations, I explained you the situations, right? So yeah, if yeah, you yeah. see certain situations, then filters are needed. Okay. okay. And for the delimited, like, um, um, uh, if if there is like a, a pipe pipeline, like that's what we should put in the configuration, a pipeline. Yeah. next is a merging so merging i'll not be explaining over here because merging we generally configure for the non authoritative applications okay so there i'll be explaining about the merging so iteration partitioning generally it will be automatic only but you have large number of data like 10000 20000 records are there then if you want to partition them while you are aggregating like only aggregate 2000 identities only aggregate 3000 identities at a time like you are partitioning the data all at a time or splitting the data one after the other so if you can enable manually define it and define it for example 10000 records are there if you want to split it into five aggregations kind of put it five so 2000 records will be pulled at once again 2000 again 2000 like that the data would be pulled so as of now i am putting is automatic only and i am leaving it next go to schema over here you can see the settings is done right now i just went to schema so in the schema you will be comparing that identity attributes so how do we get the data first of all click on this discover schema attributes button once you click on discover schema attributes button and if you are given the file path properly you will be able to see all the attributes listed and among these attributes we have cost center attribute that contains multiple values that i shown you in the yesterday session also right so cost center is one attribute that has multiple values in it if you want to check it out also i can show you over here see employee id only one first name last name 
but you can see the cost center data it is enclosed with double quotes and multiple values are there that's why you need to observe the data so this is a cost center i'm marking it as a multi value tree and save it then post this next you are supposed to configure the header okay in the header already this native object type will be populated you are supposed to configure this identity attribute and display attribute so identity attribute is the primary value we know right it's a unique value so that we can just store the employee id in we can uh, tell the identity attribute as employee how about the display attribute any kind of a name so i am just taking like full name as a display attribute done now if you want to preview your data how your data looks like if you want to see you can click on this preview button so the first 10 values will be visible for you okay first 10 records will be visible so do you have 1000 records or 10000 records also the first 10 uh, records only will be visible for your uh, just observation purpose if this data is not visible properly or only a few records are visible then you must again reconfigure check what is what went wrong and again see the preview first 10 records should be absolutely fine and visible next so this is done next thing correlation part so we are supposed to do the manager correlation but not right now we will be doing it after we do the identity mapping next we are going to learn about the rules so i am going to write a creation rule for this application so creation rule we are going to write or like we are going to set a default password to uh, which would be applicable to all the identities so what how we can write it is you can click on this uh, small button over here it will open an editor in that you will be writing your piece of code so i am going to import a package import Will point dot object dot identity. So in this only you will be able to set the password. It's just a two-liner uh, code, nothing much complicated. So I am importing your packages. Post to that, I am going to set the password. Set password is one of the method, and we are doing in the variable identity. So you can just type it like identity dot set password. and you can pass the password in the double quotes you can just pass it like for example i am going to give it the password as alpha so i am just giving like uh, alpha as the default password for all the identities so this is the piece of code that i have just written so rule name i am just giving like password rule and save it done Once I have saved it, select the rule. Don't forget to select the rule. Select the rule, scroll down, and save it. So just go to setup tasks. We are going to create the aggregation task and execute it. So click on this new task, account aggregation selected. So give a name. So what I am going to do is for both the applications, I am creating one aggregation only, and I can combine both the applications, like scan both the applications in one task. So I am just giving a heading called HR data aggregation. Then scroll down a bit, select the application that you want to scan. So I am. I can either select one one by one, two different tasks also you can create it, or in one task also you can pull both the Uh, applications data okay both are fun and you will be seeing a lot of check boxes over here so based upon your requirement you will be selecting certain check check boxes you can get the information when you click on this help button when you just hover your mouse on the help button but the recommended check boxes are like two check boxes that we will be selecting so those are 
detect deleted accounts because any kind of an options when we have requested an access those gets deleted right so those should not be coming again for the request so detect deleted accounts and disable optimization of unchanged accounts so these are the two check boxes that we can they which are recommended to select if you don't select it also there is no harm if you don't select any check box over here and click on save and execute also there is no harm in it but these are just recommended check boxes for maintenance purpose so scroll down click on save and execute then once this is being done let's wait for the task to result so it is done right you can just open the task result we will be seeing how many identities got pulled you can see two applications got scanned total account scan 229 identities created 229 okay this is how you can understand i feel feel to identity yes so my so so why did, uh, i just have a little bit of confusion why did you use two authoritative uh, uh, application just as a project that i have designed like this way it may be one authoritative or two just because people were asking like is that only one authoritative application only can be on board can be not on board other so based upon those questions only we had designed the project in this uh, such way. uh based based on my own understanding like uh, any organization has only one authoritative source of that yes yes in the real time most of the project that you see it will be only one authoritative application so so you using this as as an example that uh, correct because okay. people should not go in an assumption like uh, mandatory only one authoritative application only can be onboarded should not be an assumption man So it can be multiple applications, multiple authoritative applications also. It really depends upon how we get the data. So currently, I have two target systems where we had to create two different approaches. But if we have two uh, or more authoritative applications, wouldn't yeah. be like a mismatch of a, of a, of a information of data? It won't be a mismatch, right? Because the data will be completely different. Employees, employee data will be there. Contractors, contractor information will be there. Ah, uh, okay. All so all these two twenty nine okay. are the unique identities. Ah, uh, all right, all right. So in the case of contractors and full time employees, okay. Yes, contractors and full time employees. Okay, I got it. This project has been designed that way. All right. Generally, you. In, uh, you can also club all these identities into one single file also. That gives us only one authority work. Either of the way. Okay, got it. Thank you. So, if you see this data, this particular identity, if I open it, you can see only the username. But what about the first name, last name, email, manager? Everything is empty. Now, what we are supposed to do? We are supposed to do the mapping, identity mapping. So for that, you need to go to settings, global settings. You can see an option called identity map. Configure the identities that are managed in identity ID. So click on that. So you can see these two errors. If you remember, these two errors only came in when we are doing the installation of the tool. We would be defining them over this place, and these errors will be removed. Okay. So you can see, click on this display name first. First, we will be configuring the default sale point attributes. Post to that, we will be configuring the extended attributes. So you can see the display name over here. Scroll down a bit. You will be seeing source mapping. Click on add source. Select the application. Select the corresponding attribute. I selected the display name, right? So display name means full name. You can select add it. Like we are just mapping, we are just telling sale point what data needs to be stored under what value. Full name. That's it. So you should be careful enough to select these options because sometimes people may mistakenly select the attribute for same applications twice. That may be also a possibility. If you have done some such kind of mistakes, you are supposed to click on delete sources, select that wrong one that you have selected, and you can delete it. 
and again you can reconfigure okay that you can do it so i'm just saving it for now next email so like that one by one attribute you are supposed to map it scroll down add source add the application add the attribute add it if you had one application only one application you would have added since i have two applications i had to map to two applications that is the intention first name with first name so is there any other way like to do them like uh, to automate this no generally like it's a one time operation right so initially when you are onboarding the authority of application you have to do it uh, manually only for how many attributes that you have so those many times you are supposed to do it so group factory i am selecting for this particular attribute why because group of people will be active group of people will be inactive considering that we are marking this attribute as a group factory attribute This is a very easy exercise. Like, uh, hardly it won't take five minutes for you to add, map all that. Once you have added, done. Just all the other applic hundreds of applications you create also the same data will be considered. Set. Another attribute is defaultly a group factory. We do need to change it. Same. Done. We have done with the default sales point attributes. Now we are going to work on the extended attributes. So starting with this employee ID status that will be duplicated. So click on Add New Attribute in the bottom. So type the values. So whatever the value that we have given uh, in the configuration, if you remember that uh, XML configuration that we have made while we are doing the installation, right? So that attribute only we need to give it. So it was like EMP capital I and small D. Here you can just give it like your friend is explaining. Next, I am marking it as a searchable. Only for the extended attribute, you will be seeing the searchable field. For other default attributes, you will not see the searchable field. Why? Because those are defaultly searchable. So by selecting these options, what would happen? Also, I'll be telling you. So I am just selecting the searchable. Scroll down. Add the source. See, one error is lost. Next one is the status. The status column is a tricky part. Why? Because there is no status column or status attribute at all in our data. This is one example for you. So, status is a complete new attribute we don't have in our data. You can see this list of attributes. Do you see any status? No, right? So, what exactly is the status? Is it yeah. the state of the identity or? Uh... I'll tell you. So, I am introducing this status as a new attribute, differentiating employees and contractors. 
so status i am marking as uh, employee and other status as contractor so employees will be considered as employee status contractors will be assigned with a contractor status to differentiate them you getting yeah yeah so that is the intention i am introducing a new aspect so this is also a possible way so i am marking it as a searchable field and also i am marking it as a group factor because group of employees will be marked under one status group of uh, contractors will be marked under one so if you introduce a new attribute there is no nomenclature uh, requirement like you know like alpha alpha numeric capital it can be anything in yes. the na name that you create okay. you can put it but uh, we already defined this status in the or uh, xml file right you remember that there i have given in everything in lower case status okay. and generally remember this attribute names will be like camel case the lower case will be it starts with the lower case. okay for example status attribute is there so like this it will be there this is a camel case you so next add source so if you just select by uh, selecting the application you won't be seeing the status attribute over here then what you are supposed to do so instead of selecting this application attribute uh, radio button you will be selecting this application rule and you are supposed to write a rule over here so just it's a small one liner rule we are returning that value okay see returns attribute value you can see here right so returns a return Yes, employee. Close the page and semicolon. So employee status will save. Select that. This is for employee data. Add it. Now for contractor again. Select the application. Return contractor. Return is a command in sale point. Just to recall, that no, no, it's not a command in sale point. Java command only. If you are returning some values to be uh, printed, so we use this uh, return statement. It's Java uh, programming and not related to completed sale point. This is a bean shell scripting. Generally, we call. So as I told you, right, syntactically, bean shell scripting will be a Java program. Actor role, and I recommended everyone who wanted to who as a developer role to start learning the Java programming parallelly while you are learning the sales part. So I'm just saving it. Contractor role added. So done with selection, right? Scroll down and save it. This is being done. Now I have few more attributes. I'll be adding two attributes as of now, and I'll close it. remaining you can just take it as a homework and complete for the remaining attributes so i'm just adding like the region now so region uh, could be a group factory so if you select group factory automatically it will be searchable as well so select the application and select the attribute region add it add source Select the application. Select the attribute. Add it, and then save. One last attribute that is a department attribute. I'm going to add, but you can just continue with adding location, job title, cost center. Three more are there. You can just take it as a number. It's there in the section, and whatever the things that I am uh, practically doing it over here, everything is present in the section one document. you can follow the steps over there as well either you can follow the recording or you can follow the steps that are mentioned in the section 1 document so attribute name uh, department so i'm not selecting anything for department as of now just adding the value mapping the value can we go back any time and make this uh, attribute a searchable or group factory yes we will be doing that is the reason i am not making anything for this department there will be a situation where we are we will be working upon a custom workflow at that time 
I will be coming back to this department to change some values. Okay, I am selecting contractor only again. So, for department add it and save it. Done. The valid is attributes. So remaining three attributes are the location, job title, and cost center. The location you can directly add it with the two applications. Job title is present only for employee data. So you will be selecting only employee application, not the contractor application. Remember. Cost center, you will be selecting all the three checkboxes. It is a multi-valued, it is a group factory, it is a searchable. All the three checkboxes you will be selecting. And you will be selecting both the applications. So that's how you will be configuring the remaining three attributes. Now I have done with the identity mapping, right? The next step is we are supposed to do the manager correlation, which we kept on hold, right? So open the application. Go to the correlation. Scroll down. Manager correlation. Select the manager ID equals to the identity attribute employee. Yesterday I explained about the manager correlation and the same configuration that I have done. Same thing with the contractor also. Application attribute manager ID equals to them. Save Done. Once you are done with all these kind of configurations, we are supposed to refresh the identities. So currently with this configurations, more data will be auto populated over here. We are supposed to refresh this identities. Hence, we are we are supposed to run a task. What is that task? It's identity refresh cube task or refresh identity cube task. You can see just right click on this task. It's an existing task. Just right click on it and click on execute in background. Or else you can open it and execute. You can see an option in the bottom. You can click on execute. Both will be fine. Task results. So refresh task will be taking some time. Why? Because it should refresh all the 230 identities. That is the reason. On this refresh button, it's done, right? You can open it and check it out. The results. So that the identity is got successfully refreshed. Now, if you go to the identities and identity warehouse, you will be able to see the data. See, you will be able to see this data. So, for for example, this person doesn't have a manager. What does this mean? Is like you can open any other identity. So you can see this manager. It's Douglas Flores. If you click on that manager. It will take you to that identity, Douglas Floors. If you now click on the mm -hmm. Douglas Floors manager, Amanda Ross, it will take you to the Amanda Ross identity. So Amanda Ross manager is Jerry Bennett. If you click on Jerry Bennett, it will take you to Jerry Bennett identity. Jerry Bennett doesn't have a manager. What does this mean? He is a hierarchical person. Like that, you can understand the configuration. So this is how the data will be pulled. Now, some of you might have a question like, I can see only a few attributes. What happened to the remaining attributes? Can I see them also? Yes, you can see it. So for that, you need to make a UI configuration. So you can go to this debug pages. You can see another bookmark over here. Click on that. It will take you to the debug page. In that, you will be seeing a configuration options. Click on that. Click on UI configuration. There's a default UI screen. Indeed. On that, we are making some changes. There is a huge file. It will take some time to load. Yeah. So now in this, just give Control F, search for identity view attributes. Okay. This is the entry. Key. So here, name, first name, last name, email, manager, only. 
after manager click on it give a comma and add some more values like employee id emp capital i n d next status region department hotels inactive okay these are all the names if you have added some more attributes also you can add those as well over here like so we can topic. add this only when we have added the attributes it's not like that we add this line we edit this line and uh, it will take all the attributes no for example i have added uh, location the location we have it mapped over there right yeah so if i save it nothing the location attribute only will not be shown okay so we have to add it there then only we can uh, extend the commands here right so i'll show you now so i have just added and saved that file right so now if i went to identity warehouse if you open any identity see location attribute only is not shown so we typed over there because it is not mapped getting okay? and inactive field is empty empty means this identity is active means true oh, sorry false if inactive is equal to true if that identity is inactive state it will be showing like inactive equal to true the true value will be visible to you but false value it will not visible it will represent as a blank value okay remember this because this is very important in your real time observation as well so that is what sale point is being defined so this is an active identity which means inactive field will be false but it will be shown like a blank field So what is the debug page? Also, we'll be learning. So generally, uh, debug page is a backend uh, files of sale point. Whatever that we are configuring on the UI. For example, this is an identity queue. Okay. So this is your this you are seeing on the UI screen in a very custom way, right? But when you go to the debug page and search for this particular entity, it will display like an XML file. If you want to check it out, just go to debug pages again. the same adam kennedy identity search for the identity object open this adam kennedy identity. so this is how sale point understands in the back is that clear so that is the intention or purpose of the deep if you want to change anything you can come and do So this completes your authoritative mm -hmm. application on